and welcome back to my channel. My name is Maham and I crochet cute things. Please don't skip the intro because I'm going to be going over some frequently asked questions that I usually get in the comments and I'm going to be explaining the process and materials for all the things that you need to create three different kinds of bags. The first bag is one of my favorites. It's really simple but it's one of the cutest as well because you can dress it up with some keychains. It's inspired by my favorite Prada bag, which is actually one of my very first big girl purchases. So I put some bag charms on it, I've got some keychains on it, and I've got two really cute videos that have a compilation of different bag charms that you could check out. You're just going to need some key rings for this, and I've linked those on my Amazon storefront. However, if you don't have key rings, that's okay. You can also just make a regular strap and attach it to the bag you don't need to do it exactly like i do you can always customize the size so you can make the strap longer you can make the strap smaller you can make the bag wider longer taller it's completely up to you next we've got the harry's house tote bag i am a big fan of harry styles my sister and i love him and this tote bag is actually for her if you're looking for a harry styles inspired jewelry i came across le petite sprout she has some amazing stuff and she sent me some of her really lovely necklaces as well but this tote bag follows a pixel grid if you've never worked with a pixel grid before if you've never switched colors or if you've never worked with more than one color then i highly recommend that you watch my guide to pixel grid crochet video first it's really in-depth that shows you how to switch colors back and forth with lots of examples i do show you how to switch colors in this video as well but if you're a complete beginner to this then i recommend watching that video first then we've got a solid granny square messenger bag this is really really cute but me myself i don't really like making granny square bags because i found that they are very stretchy and not very usable however i have searched through lots of different stitches tried out a lot of different things and i came across a stitch that's not that stretchy so the straps won't be as stretchable so i think we're going to be able to make this granny square bag usable so don't worry about that my current goals are to not just create crochet projects but to create crochet projects that are wearable that are usable that are versatile and not just projects that are sitting on my desk not used crochet bags themselves i've noticed that the main problem with making them is that they're not always usable because yarn is stretchy the stitches are stretchy the rows are stretchy so you might make something that's one size but then when you put things into it it you know stretches out and it's not really usable you might not want to use it and then if you spend hours on something and then you can't really use it that's really discouraging so for all of these bags i've tried to make i've tried to really find a way that makes your bag usable so less stretchy straps and another thing you could do is also sew in a lining i've been learning a lot of things i've recently picked up sewing because i knew that i wanted to create a lining for these bags and to make them even more usable i might even want to add a zipper to them i've also researched what kind of yarns to use because i generally struggle with picking the best kind of yarn to use for my project and for all of these things i've had the help of today's sponsor which is skillshare I've been exploring a bunch of different sewing classes. I found this really great class that I'll be following to crochet an inner lining bag with a zipper for the crochet bags to keep them from stretching and to make them more usable. And if you're like me and struggle with choosing yarn for your projects, this modern crochet class was incredibly helpful in helping me pick the right kind of yarn for my bags to get a sturdy yet light feel. You may know Skillshare for classes in photography, film, and video editing and illustration, but did you know Skillshare has hundreds of career-focused classes too? I've also been learning how to use Notion and maximize my productivity as a content creator with this Notion Masterclass. As a crochet and content creator, I have to juggle multiple projects and thinking about creating content and shooting videos and creating multiple posts for one project itself can be really daunting. But what I love about Skillshare is that Skillshare teachers will take us step by step. By using Notion and with some help from the Notion Masterclass, I was able to free up mental space and do what I do best, which is generating ideas and creating crochet projects. This is my Notion right over here. It's really neat and organized and I'm quite proud of it. It helps me be the best version of myself. Everything's organized in one place. Whenever I get an idea, I know exactly where to go and enter it. So my mind isn't just a jumble of ideas. Everything's nice and organized. So once you're ready to redefine your career and unlock creative possibilities with a Skillshare membership, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description box will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. So to turn regular yarn into sort of a thicker yarn, you're going to take your end over here and you're going to fold it in on itself like that. Make sure it's pretty long. And then once you've got these two ends, you're going to bring this end over here and you're going to fold it back. You don't have that much space to work but you're just going to fold it back to that first little loop you made 
and then just straighten the pieces out so it's a bit more organized. And then you're going to make a slip knot like you normally would. So here's how I like to do mine. Grab under. Remember, you should always be grabbing onto three pieces of yarn, and those three pieces equal one piece of yarn. So as I'm making my slip knot, I'm going to grab three pieces, and then I'm just going to pull it up and tighten like that. So on your hook, you should have three pieces of yarn. This is what you should have after making your slip knot. Remember, there should be three pieces of yarn on your hook. We're not going to be working with this. We are going to be working with this loop and the long tail that's attached to your ball of yarn. So you're going to insert your hook through that slip knot that you made. Remember to grab onto all three loops. So ignoring this over here, to make your chunky yarn basically longer, you're going to grab onto this end and you're just going to pull it. And now I've got three pieces of yarn together that make one piece of yarn. Now I'm just gonna chain like normal with the chunky yarn. Doing regular chains and I'm grabbing on to all three pieces of yarn and then pulling them through. Once you run out of yarn to get more chunky yarn, you've got your loop, you're gonna take this end and you're gonna pull it through like that. And then you're going to have more chunky yarn to work with. So again, I'm just holding onto it like normal. I grab the three pieces of yarn and I pull it through making a chain. And that's basically it. Now you're gonna chain the width that you want for your bag. Okay, so I switched to a lighter color yarn so I can show you what I mean, but let's say for examples purposes, let's say this is the width that you wanna make your bag. This is the actual width that I made my bag, but the black yarn is so hard to see. So for the demonstration, I'm gonna show you with a smaller example over here with the pink yarn, but the steps are the exact same. So once you have the width that you want for your bag, you're going to skip the first chain and you're going to go and insert a half double crochet into the second chain from your hook. So yarn over, insert your hook into that second chain and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. And that is how to make a double half double crochet. Now you're going to go ahead and insert a half double crochet into all of the chains until you get to the end of the row. Once you reach the end of the row and you've got one chain left, in this very last chain, instead of inserting one half double crochet, you're going to insert three half double crochets in that same last chain. So that's one, and then in that same chain I'm going to do two. And as you're working, just work. And as you're working, you can kind of turn your work this way as well to make it easier for yourself. And again, that last chain, a half double crochet. All right, now you've got your half double crochets and you've got three in that last chain. Now you're gonna turn your work this way so that the backs of the chains are facing upwards. Skipping this very last chain, now you're going to insert a half double crochet into the backs of all the chains. So look, this is the top of your half double crochet stitches, and these are the backs of your chains. So yarn over and insert a half double crochet into all of the backs of the chains. And this is how we start working in a round. You don't have to keep count or anything, just make sure that you are working in the backs of the chains. Here's a little bit of a close up of what I've done. I'm just working to the backs. And I've got one chain left over here. As you can see, that is my very first half double crochet that I did, and that is the very last chain. So I'm gonna yarn over and insert two half double crochets into that very last chain. So one and two. In that same chain look, so we've got two half double crochets over there. So technically you've got three half double crochets on this end and then three half double crochets on this end, counting that very first half double crochet that you made in the beginning. Now you can go ahead and start working in rounds. So starting from that very first stitch, you're going to insert a half double crochet. And now you're just gonna go ahead and insert one half double crochet into all of the stitches. You don't have to keep count, you don't have to track how many stitches you're doing. Just go into every stitch like I am over here. Remember a stitch is this V part over here. Just go ahead and insert one half double crochet in each stitch. 
Now for the body of the bag, you're going to keep doing half double crochets round and round and round until the bag is the size that you want it to be. And as you're working, you're going to notice that it's going to curl and it's going to go upwards. Here's my progress on the bag. Once again, I'm just inserting one half double crochet into all of the stitches and this is what will build the length of your bag. When I run out of yarn to use, I just make it, I just pull it from over here and then I get more chunky yarn to use and then I can continue on like normal. If you're using regular yarn, you can skip this step and just half double crochet into all of the stitches. Once you have the size that you want, you're going to go into the next stitch. You can end this on the side and you're just going to slip stitch like that. And now you can just cut your work and pull. I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to pull this and then make it tighter to secure it in place. Now I'm going to take these ends that I have here and I'm just going to weave them through the stitches with my hook to hide them. You can also do this inwards, I'm just going to do it out because it doesn't really make that much of a difference. To attach the keyring, you're going to need a plastic needle. Find the place where you want to attach your keyring. I'm going to use these two stitches over here. This over here. I'm going to insert my needle through the stitch and through the keyring as well, pulling it all the way. And then when it's close to the edge, I'm going to tie a knot to secure the keyring in place. So I'm just going to make the knot really tight, double knotted to secure it. Now your keyring is going to be attached there. Now all you have to do is go through the stitch and through the keyring multiple times until it's formed sort of like a border around it. So look, you're going to keep going up and up and up and you can see all of these yarn ends go on top of the keyring. And you can go through the other stitch as well and then through the keyring and pull. So look, it's just going to form on top and you keep doing this multiple times. Once I was done, I just tied a knot and then cut the yarn and now my keyring is secured. Now, once you're done making the straps, using the same technique, you're going to attach the straps to the keyring with your needle. You're going to start off by making a slip knot. You can make this any way you like. I'm once again using my 4.5mm hook for this regular yarn, but if you're using chunky yarn like me, then I recommend a 6mm hook. For demonstration purposes, I'm using this pink yarn because the black yarn is really hard to see. After making your slip knot, you can chain whatever number you want to get the width that you want for your strap. So because I was using chunky yarn and it was really thick, I only chained three. But if you have a thinner yarn, you might want to chain four or five. Whatever number you chain, after getting the width that you want, you're also going to make a turning chain. Now this turning chain is just there to help us start a new row. That's your turning chain. You're going to skip that and you're going to single crochet into the second chain from your hook. I like using single crochets for straps because they are a bit tighter than half double crochets or double crochets. Then you can go ahead and single crochet into each of your chains. I'm single crocheting into that last chain over there and that is my first row. After completing your first row, here is the part where you get two options. If you want really straight edges, then don't chain one when starting a new row. However, if you want sort of like a bumpy or textured edge like I did here, I quite liked it. It gave the bag a little bit of personality. So if you want to chain one, you can chain one at the start of every row, turn your work, and then you're going to start your next row from the stitch, not from the chain one. So you're going to insert your hook into that first stitch like that and then you can start your next row and just single crochet into each of the stitches. However, if you don't want to chain one, I'm going to show you what to do next. Now if you want to do without a turning chain or without the chain one, all you have to do to start a new row is turn your work and start single crocheting from that very first stitch. And the rest is the same, you just go into each of the stitches. 
is what my finished strap looks like. It's got some bumps around the edge that I quite like because it adds a cute little detail to it. But if you don't want these, you can just not chain one at the beginning of each row. I've got my key rings over here and I'm going to use my needle to attach the straps to the keyring the same way that I attach the keyring to the bag like it is on that side. To make the Harry's House tote bag, I'm going to be using a 4.5mm hook and 100% acrylic yarn. You're going to start off by making a slip knot, and we're going to be following this pixel grid to make our Harry's House design on the front of our bag. So starting off with the front of the bag, we are going to look at the bottom row and count how many boxes there are in the row. You can do this for any row. So after counting the boxes, I found out that there are 43 boxes in each row of this pixel grid. That means that to start our work, our foundation chain should be 43 chains. So after making your slip knot, you are going to chain 43, which is the same number of boxes in each row of the pixel grid. So make sure that you keep count, don't make your chains too tight, keep them nice and even, and chain 43. Once you've got 43 chains, we are going to chain one, which is just a turning chain and it doesn't count as a stitch. Now we're going to start our first row from the bottom of our pixel grid. Now in the first row, there are only background color boxes and I'm using white for the background color. So I just have to do one single crochet in every chain to make this row. So I did our turning chain over there, and since this doesn't count as a stitch, we're going to ignore it, and we're going to start inserting our single crochets from the second chain from your hook. So insert your hook into that chain, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through two loops. This is your first stitch, or the first box in the pixel grid. Now go ahead and insert one single crochet into every chain, and keep in mind as you're working that one single crochet stitch is equal to one box in your pixel grid. This is what my completed first row looks like, and now I'm going to start my second row. So looking at the grid, again, this row is just plain background color boxes. So to start my new row, I'm not going to chain one, I'm just going to directly turn my work, and I'm going to start from the very first stitch. I'm going to insert my hook there into that stitch like that. Remember, one stitch is this V part over there, and then I'm just going to single crochet. And I'm going to insert a single crochet into every stitch to make my second row. So here's how we're going to follow the grid. So you had made your chain and your chain was going in this direction. And then you started your first row. So your chain went in this direction over here. And then you started your first row. You've got your first single crochet and then you went in this direction. Then you did your second row which went in this direction. So when we start counting the boxes for the colors in the third row, you're going to be starting from this direction over here where you ended your second row. So now we're going to count the boxes that we have of the background color before we need to switch colors to the color for the house. So we've got five background colors and then we've got 12 colors for the house and then 26 for the background color. So we're going to go ahead and start our third row. This is where I ended off my second row and I'm just going to turn my work to start a new row and insert my first single crochet into that first stitch over there. Since we've got to do five stitches with the background color, that's one, two. Now whenever you want to switch colors, always switch color on the last stitch of the current color. So since fifth stitch is my last stitch, I'm going to insert my hook and I'm going to pull up a loop for the single crochet, but I'm not going to complete it. To switch colors, you always complete the single crochet with the next color that you want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and get the color that I want to use. I'm going to be using brown, and I've kind of sort of turned it into chunky yarn because this brown was way too thin. Just ignore what I'm doing for this. This is an optional step. Just pretend that I'm using a regular yarn for the house color. But with the color that you want to use next, once again, please pretend that I'm using a regular strand of yarn. Just pretend this is not three strands, pretend it's one strand. So get that yarn that you want to use next and make a little loop with it. Like that, just make a little loop and then complete the single crochet with that loop. So grab on and pull it through your single crochet. And for this pixel grid, I'm going to be using the carry on method. 
So if you're using a darker color and you don't want the yarn to poke out from behind your stitches, you can use the floating yarn technique, which I show in my how to crochet any pixel grid video. It's linked in the description box if you want to see that and not use the carry on method. And now you've got your end of the yarn that you're going to work over and then you've got this, which you're going to make your working yarn. And we're going to carry the white, which means that we're going to be working over it. So get your yarn that you're using. And now we have to do 12 stitches with the house color. So go into the next stitch and just keep your white turned towards you like this because you're going to be carrying them and working over them. And then just single crochet like normal. So that is my first single crochet. Again, I'm just going to be working over the white. So look how my hook goes into the stitch while the yarn that I'm carrying is in the middle and then I work over it. So I'm just doing regular single crochets, but I am working over the white as I go along. Whatever yarn you're going to be carrying is going to be turned towards you, and you're just going to be working over it until you need to switch colors again. Now I've done 11, and since the 12th stitch is going to be my last stitch, I have to switch colors over here. So I'm going to insert my hook into my 12th stitch, I'm going to pull up a loop, but I'm not going to complete the single crochet. Instead, I'm going to cross over the brown to this side, and I'm going to grab and make white my working yarn, the yarn that I want to work with, and I'm going to complete the single crochet with the white. Now we're going to be carrying the brown as we work. If you don't want to carry the brown, or if it's showing through your white and you don't really like that, you can just let it go. You can just leave it here until you need to use it again. And this is kind of mixing the carry-on and the floating yarn technique. Now we just have to do 26 stitches with the background color. The pattern for the next row is going to start from the other side of the pixel grid. So we started from this side and now we have to go back over here. So we're going to do the fourth row. What I've done is I've made a neat little written pattern on my notes, just counting out all the boxes and writing them down. So B stands for background color and H stands for house color. So we're doing row four right now and we're going to follow this pattern. If you don't want to waste time counting out all the boxes yourself, I do have the written pattern linked in the description box. It's on my coffee shop our work and we're going to do 26 with white and then I'm going to show you how to switch colors once again. So since I have to do 26 with white, I'm going to switch on the last stitch which will be the 26th stitch. Now I'm about to do my 26th stitch over here and I also have to switch colors. Now this is going to be the back side of my work where all of my ends are just going to be floating or showing and this is going to be the right side. Every time you're working on the back side, this is how you're going to switch colors. So you're going to grab onto the color that you want to switch to. And you're just going to put it on your hook like this. Once the color you want to switch to is on your hook, then you can insert your hook through the stitch like that. And now you're going to do your single crochet and then you're going to switch colors. So cross your yarn over to the back side. And you're going to grab onto the color you want to switch to and complete the single crochet with that. Now I'm just going to carry on the white because I have to do one single crochet with the house color then switch to background color. So I'm just going to keep my white there. I'm going to grab onto the brown but since I have to switch colors again I'm just going to cross it over and I'm going to get the white as my working yarn. So that's what it's going to look like on the other side. And now I've got to do 12 with white, so I'm just going to count and then show you how I switch colors again. Over here, I am not going to be carrying the brown because I don't want it to show through. It was 10 and not 12, so I'm going to do my 10th stitch, and since it's the last stitch, I also have to switch colors, so I'm going to float the brown, and I'm going to put it on top of my hook like this. Now I'm going to take my hook and insert it into the stitch where I want to work next. And I'm just going to make this tight, but not too tight. So remember to leave the yarn that you're floating a little bit loose. And then I'm going to switch colors, cross over the white to the back side, and switch to brown. Now I'm just going to carry the white because I'm going to have to switch to it after the next color that I'm about to do. Cross over, grab the white, and complete that. Now I've got to do 
five with white, so I'm just going to leave the brown there. I'm not going to carry it. Now we did our fourth row going this way, so now we've got to do our fifth row going that way. And I have counted it out. We are going to do five single crochets with the background color, and then I'm going to show you how to switch colors. Now we're working on the right side, the part of our work which will have no ends on it. So it's going to be completely clean because this is the part of the bag that we're going to show. Every time you're working on the right side, here's how you're going to switch colors. So I'm going to do my fifth and last stitch with the white. So I'm going to insert my hook and I'm going to get the brown and I'm going to put it on top of my hook before I do the single crochet. Then I'm going to do the single crochet with white. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry the white with me. So if you want to carry the white with you, you're going to cross it over to the right side and you're going to complete the brown single crochet but if you don't want to carry the whites with you and you want to leave it in the back like we did over here then just leave it at the back let me just show you how to do that so again this is completely up to your preference so if you didn't want to carry the whites you just leave it in the back or whatever color you're using and you don't want to carry it leave it at the back side and just do it with the next color that you want to use and then go ahead and do however many stitches you need to do but because I want to carry the whites, I'm just going to bring it up again. And I'm going to work over the white. This just makes it easier for myself, and I don't like that many ends being at the back. If you're confused, I have a better, more in-depth tutorial on how to crochet any pixel grid that you could check out. It has a lot more examples, and it also shows you how you can do any pixel grid, so you can potentially make any pixel grid into a bag using this tutorial. Okay, I'm about to do my 12th and last stitch that I need to do with the brown, and I'm gonna switch to white. So I'm gonna bring this up, but because I don't want to carry the brown, I'm just gonna leave it at the back, and I'm gonna make white my working yarn. So when you don't want to carry a yarn, you can leave it at the back and just leave it there, and then just continue working with the color that you wanna use. And that is how you're gonna follow the pixel grid. Just go ahead, I've put up the free pixel grid on my blog, the link is in the description box so you can follow that along and if you don't want to waste your time counting out all the boxes yourself, I do have the written pattern all ready for you on my co coffee shop as well. To end my work, because I don't want to use brown anymore, I'm just going to cut it and then I'm going to tie it into a knot to one of the stitches. This is what my finished front piece looks like. I decided not to do the heart, so I just did plain white rose over there, but if you wanted to do the heart, you can follow the pixel grid as it is. And now I'm going to show you how to make hearts if you just want to sew them on and you don't want to do them with the pixel grid. Now I'm going to show you how to make this heart that you can sew onto your bag. I'm going to be using a 3mm hook because my yarn is pretty thin but you can use any hook size and any yarn size that you want to use. We're going to get started by making a magic ring. So take your yarn and wrap it around your fingers making sort of like an X shape and then hold on to it with your other finger. Then grab your hook, put it through, pull it up and twist and then you're going to chain one while the magic ring is still on your finger that's your chain one now we need to chain two more to make a total of three chains so two and three now we're going to follow the following pattern we're going to insert two triple crochets so you can yarn over twice insert your hook into the magic ring pull up a loop then yarn over pull through two loops yarn over, pull through the other two loops, and then yarn over and pull through two loops again. That is your triple crochet. One more time, you're gonna yarn over twice. You're gonna insert your hook into the magic ring, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. That is your triple crochet. Now we have to insert three double crochets. Yarn over once, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. Go ahead and do two more to make a total of three double crochets. Now you're going to insert one triple crochet. I'm going to pull my ring in a little bit tighter so it's easier for me to control my work. And now we're going to do one triple crochet. 
and three double crochets again. Two and three. Now we're going to do two triple crochets again. And remember to always be inserting these stitches into the magic ring. And now we've got all the stitches that we need for the heart, you can pull this a little bit tight. And to end your work, you're going to chain three, one, two, and three, and then pull this really, really tight. Get your hook and insert it into the magic circle again, and then you're going to slip stitch. So you're going to pull this in, and then look at that, you're going to have two loops on your hook, and you're going to pull through. With that same loop, you're going to pull it through, making a slip stitch like that. And then you can just tighten this, then chain two, because we're going to fasten off. And get your scissor, make sure you cut a long tail so that you can use this tail to sew your heart onto the bag. And then you're going to pull this all the way up. And before you tighten, make sure that you tighten the other string. Tighten your magic circle all the way. Now get this, turn your heart to the back side and pull it this way. Tighten it the other way. This is what gives it that little heart shape in the middle. And there you go. To make the straps, I went and got some bobby pins. You can also use stitch markers and I marked Place where I want the straps to start. What you're going to do is wherever your hook is, you're going to start from there and you're going to begin a new row. So you're going to go ahead and insert one single crochet in every stitch until you reach the stitch where you've marked. Now once you've reached the place where you want the strap to start from, you are going to chain the length that you want for your strap. Now these chains, don't make them too loose, make them nice and even. A little bit tight if you want because these chains are what will prevent your strap from stretching too much. Chains prevent your work from stretching any more past this. You've got the chain length that you want. You're going to slip stitch back into the place where you want the strap to join. So that's my 10th stitch over here. And make sure your chain is straight and not twisting. Insert your hook into that stitch and then you're going to slip stitch like that. Now you can go ahead and single crochet into the other stitches. Now you're going to start your next row, so turn your work, single crochet back all the way, and this time we're going to be single crocheting into the chains as well. And once you reach your chains, you're going to be working into the chains as well, so insert your hook into the chain, and you're just going to single crochet in the chains as well. And this is what's going to build the width for your strap. Make sure you don't skip any chains. Just go into every chain and single crochet until you reach the other side. Now I'm all the way back to the other side and once again I'm just going to single crochet until I reach the end of my work. Now I'm going to do another row to make the strap even thicker, but I don't want to do another row here, which means that I don't want this part to get any thicker. So if you're the same, then what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch until we reach the strap instead of single crochet. And I am going to slip stitch until I reach my strap. So you just insert your hook and you slide that loop through to make a slip stitch. And once you reach the strap, you can just single crochet like normal and then you single crochet into all of the stitches that are on the strap after joining my work back over here i am going to slip stitch back around so i just finished my work over here i'm going to slip stitch just once to join the work and now i'm going to go back all over the strap and slip stitch there what this is going to do is it's going to make my straps just a little bit tighter and stop the single crochet stitches from stretching as well. And my slip stitches here are going to be really, really tight. They're not going to be loose, as you can see over there. I'm just going to go all the way across the strap, making them even tighter and a bit more secure. Now, once I've come back to the other side, I'm just going to fasten off my work and I like to chain two and then simply cut my yarn. Leave a bit of a tail for weaving it in later, and pull, and tighten. 
and after doing the back side you're going to repeat these same steps to do the straps for the back as well it's going to be the same exact steps i'm going to show you how to make the back part for the bag i'm going to be working directly on the front piece that we made so turn your work to the back where you've got all your floating yarns and you're going to attach your hook into the corner stitch over there then you're going to get your yarn and you're going to make a little loop with it like that you're going to slide the loop through pull and you're going to tie a knot to secure this yarn in place now you've attached your yarn we can begin working on the back side now, since we had 43 single crochets for the front side, we need to have 43 single crochets here as well. So you're going to grab onto your yarn and you're going to pull up a loop like this. Then you're going to chain one to begin your first row. And now we're going to be working all across, inserting a single crochet into these chains. So insert your hook into the chain and single crochet. While you're single crocheting, make sure to keep count so that you can make sure that you have 43 single crochets at the end of this row. And I'm going to use a bobby pin and I'm going to place it into that chain one that I made just so I can remember that this is my first row of the back piece. And I'm just going to continue to single crochet like normal until I reach the end of this row. And then once you've done 43 single crochets, you're going to start a new row. I'm not going to chain one, I'm just going to turn my work and start single crocheting from that very first stitch and now i'm just going to insert one single crochet in every stitch until i reach the end of the row once i reach the end of the row i'm going to start another row and repeat the same process again and again until my back piece is the same size as my front piece i'm going to show you how to join the sides together to close up your tote bag remember after finishing up the back side so that's my plain back side. Once you finish that up, follow the same steps that I showed you to make the straps on the back side as well. Turner, the steps are the same whether you're working on this side or whether you're working on the other side. Just line up your bag to however you want it to be. Line up the two sides. You can even use stitch markers to make sure they are in the right place so that your bag isn't going up and down and up and down. Once you've got that, you're going to insert your hook through both the pieces. When you're slip stitching, you're always going to be inserting your hook through both the pieces. And then get your yarn. I recommend using the same color so it can be hidden. And you're going to pull your yarn through both of the pieces like that. Once that's done, you can tie a knot to secure it in place. Insert your hook back through that place and pull up a loop like that and then chain one. Now you can go ahead and slip stitch all the way across. So you're going to insert your hook through the edges, it doesn't matter where, as long as it's close to the edge, through the edges of both pieces and then you're going to slip stitch like that. So you insert your hook through the edges of both the pieces and then you slip stitch. And you're going to do this all the way until you reach the end of your bag. So until you reach the end over here. And this is how you're going to join your pieces together. At the end, you can chain two, fasten off, and then weave in your ends. When you turn it back outside, the inside part is gonna be like that. So you can push this. And this is what the side is gonna look like. It's gonna be more of like a bag and you're gonna have sort of like a border going around. Go ahead and slip stitch all the way across on both sides, repeating the same steps. Once you're done slip stitching all across the border to end your work, you can just chain two and then fasten off. So I'm going to chain two over here, cut and pull, and tighten. And later on I will be making a lining for this bag so that the body doesn't stretch out and I will be following a Skillshare class to do that. Once you're done, since I was working on the back side, my last step will be to turn the bag inside out. So I'm going to push my hand in, grab onto the edge of the bag, and just pull it. And then I would recommend also stretching up the sides a little bit, just to make the slip stitches pop out like this, so you get a cleaner edge. And this is what your finished bag should look like. This is what the edges look like on the sides. And I have my straps at the top over there. 
To make the granny square, we're going to start off by making a magic circle. If you don't want to make a magic circle, you can also make a slip knot, then chain four, slip stitch into the first chain, and then work into the center of the circle that's going to be in between the chains. Hold your fingers out like this, grab onto your yarn with your thumb, and wrap it around your fingers, making sort of like an X shape. Then grab onto the yarn with your other finger, insert your hook, grab onto this end, and twist it up like that. Then you're going to grab onto this yarn while it's still on your fingers and you're going to chain one. That is going to be your first chain and you're going to have your magic circle in between. Now we need to make a total of five chains. Since we already have chain one here, we're going to chain two, three, four, and five. Now we've got five chains and our magic circle. We're going to go ahead and insert two double crochets into the magic circle. To double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook into the magic ring, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through the other two loops. That is how you make a double crochet one more time, yarn over, insert your hook into the magic circle, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops, and then you should have two loops left on your hook, yarn over and pull through those two loops as well. Oops, sorry, so we have to do three double crochets, so one, two, and three over here. So we're going to chain two, always chain two after every cluster, and then we're going to insert another three double crochets into the magic circle. So one more cluster. So that's one, two, and three. Now that we're done with our cluster, we are going to chain two, and once again insert another cluster. So another three double crochets, and three. Now every time we chain two, we are actually making the squares corners. So a square has four corners, so we've got one, two, three, and these are the sides of your square. So a square has four sides, so that means we've got to do another cluster to make the fourth side. I'm just going to pull this a little bit tighter. Chain two before you do your next cluster, and yarn over, and now you're only going to do two double crochets. You're not going to do three double crochets. That's because this chain over here counts as your first double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook. And you're just going to do two double crochets, not three. So that's one, two. Now you can pull this tighter, like that. Now our first three chains, one, two, and three, count as our first double crochet. And then these two chains over here count as the corner of your square. So count your chains, one, two, three. And in that third chain, insert your hook and slip stitch to join your round like that and there you should have your square for round one then you can pull your magic circle in tighter now we're going to chain three one two and three and in this chain two space over here look we chain two and you're going to have a little space there you're going to insert two double crochets into that space so not into the chains into the space that the chains make. So you had your chain three and then you've got two double crochets. Now we're going to chain two and once again in that same chain space, the same space, you are going to insert another two double crochets. So we're working in that same space over there. Now once you're done with that, we've got our corner for the next round of the square. Now you're going to push your double crochets to the side so you can see your first stitch, second, and third. These are the stitches that belong to these double crochets from the previous round. In those three stitches, you're going to insert one double crochet each. Starting from that first stitch, you're going to do one double crochet. In the next stitch, insert your hook like that into the stitch. That's your second. Now in the next stitch, we're going to do another like that now we've done one side in the next chain two space we're going to repeat what we did over here so you yarn over insert your hook into the chain two space and insert two double crochets now you're going to chain two and then in that same space one more time you're going to insert two double crochets in the same space so we're basically repeating what we did in that other space now you've got two corners and one side now we're going to work on this side over here, so once again I'm just going to push this a little bit to the side so I can see my first stitch, 
second and third. So you're going to start from that first stitch and you're going to insert one double crochet. Then in the next stitch, one double crochet. And in that third last stitch over there, another double crochet. So to make the sides, you basically do one double crochet in these three stitches over here. Now we've got our chain two space again, and we're going to repeat what we did in the other chain two spaces. So you yarn over and you insert two double crochets into that space, not into the chains, in the space that they're making. Then you're going to chain two and insert two double crochets in that same space. If I'm going too fast for you, you can slow the video down. I've also got the written pattern up on my blog for reference that you don't have to keep re-watching this video and you can just refer to the written pattern. Now we're back over here to make the side and we've got these three stitches. Right, so we've got one, two, three. You're going to insert one double crochet into each of these. One in the next stitch. Two in the next stitch. Three. Now we've got one more chain space to work into, so yarn over, insert two double crochets into that same chain two space. Then you're going to chain two. And then again in that same space, you are going to insert two double crochets. And this is what you should have so far. Now we've got two stitches here. So one, wait, hold on, I forgot to pull this. So you've got one, two, and in your third stitch over here, you can see that you already have your chain three and your chain three counts as a double crochet. So over here, you basically just have to do one, two, and you've already got your third double crochet there. So yarn over, one double crochet, then in the next stitch, two double crochets and now we're going to join this together so you're going to find your third chain one two and three and in that third chain insert your hook like that and then slip stitch to join and that is the end of your second round now we're going to start our third round every time you start a new round you're going to chain three and that will count as your first double crochet so the double crochet in this stitch is the chain three now we're going to insert one double crochet in the next two stitches. So this one and this one on top of these double crochets. So you're going to go into the first stitch and you're going to insert one double crochet. Then you're going to go into the, into the next stitch, insert another double crochet. We're going to repeat what we did in every chain two space, which is insert two double crochets. And then chain two, one, two, insert another two double crochets in the same chain two space. So every time you come to a chain two space, you are going to repeat these steps to make the other corner for your square. I'm just going to push this to the side a little bit so I can see my stitches. Now in these stitches over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, in the next seven stitches, you're going to insert one double crochet. Please don't forget about this first stitch over there. So we've got one in the next stitch two in the next stitch three in the next stitch four in the next stitch five in the next stitch six and then seven in this stitch over here and then we've got our chain two space and we're going to repeat what we did in every chain two space which is two double crochets chain two and then another two double crochets in the same chain two space Remember, I've got the written patterns up on my blog so that you can follow along once you feel like you understand the process. Now, once again, we've reached the side, starting from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We're going to do one double crochet in each of those stitches. If you're confused about which stitch to go into, just look at the double crochets that are under it. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven double crochets before the chain two space. That means that we need to do one double crochet in each of these seven stitches. So I did one, now I'm doing two, three. Go ahead and repeat what we do in every chain two space, then do one double crochet in each of these seven stitches, and then repeat what we do in every chain two space again over here. So I did the steps for the chain two space, and now here's what we're gonna do. We've got one, two, three, four, and then we've got five, six, and seven already done from before. And remember, this is our chain two space, so it doesn't count. Starting from this very first stitch here, we're gonna do one. So it's gonna be a bit tricky to go into. We've got one, two in the next stitch, three, and then we've got four. 
after doing four, you should have come to your chain three, which counts as a double crochet. So all together, we've got four till here, sit five, six, and seven. Now we're gonna end this round. So you're gonna count one, two, three, and in that third chain, you're gonna insert your hook and slip stitch to end your round. After finishing the round, I'm just going to chain two, and then I'm gonna cut my work and tighten and that's how I end my granny square now we are going to make six granny squares for each side so there's gonna be one two three and then three on top that's for the front and then for the back we're gonna do the same thing so in total you're gonna to make six granny squares now I'm going to show you how to join your granny squares together so the way that I like to do it is I like working in rows so I attach three granny squares together in a row and then I do this for the other half. So I'll have two sets of three granny squares and then I will attach them all in the middle. So there are many different ways to attach your granny squares. I'm gonna show you the way that I like, which makes my granny squares look like this after they're joined up. I quite like this, however, please go with whatever way you like doing to get whatever look you want to join your granny squares. When I'm attaching my granny squares, I take the ones that I want to attach together and I make them face wrong sides outward. So the wrong side is out and the wrong side is out. The wrong side is where you've basically got your stitches looking like this. The right side inwards, I have something that looks like this. So I've got my chain one and then I've got my chain two in the corners. So I'm gonna insert it through this outside loop of the chain two. So look, you've got one loop, then you've got your second loop. I go through one of the outside loops. Now again, you've got your chain one and you've got your chain two in this chain two space over there. And I'm gonna insert it through that outside loop over there. And I get my yarn and just make a little loop with it. And I slide it through. And I tie a double knot to secure my yarn in place. Now I'm going to insert my hook back through those loops where I had it and I'm going to pull up a loop and chain one. Now I'm going to be slip stitching the back sides of the granny squares together. So I insert my hook through the back loops. So look at that, you've got your V, which is your one stitch. I always insert my hook through this part over here. So this back loop and then over there you've got the inside loop and then you've got the back loop. So I'm gonna go through the back loop over there as well. Then I'm just going to slip stitch. Like that. So again, one loop, the back loop, and then one loop from the other granny square and slip stitch. Once again, one loop from here, one loop from the other one and slip stitch and i'm going to do this all the way across and once i reach the end over here i've got my chain space i've got my chain one and then i've got my chain two so i'm going to insert my hook through that chain and then i've got chain one chain two so i'm going to go through that chain one and slip stitch then to fasten off i chain two and i just cut it with my scissor pull and tighten now i've got three i've got two sets of three granny squares and what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna turn them both to the wrong side so with my right sides facing each other and my wrong sides facing outwards i'm gonna repeat the same thing the only difference is that this time i'm just gonna insert my hook through the chain space and i'm not gonna go through just one of the chains my hook's just gone through that whole chain space like that and then repeat the same steps now I'm going to pull up a loop and chain one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and insert my hook through the back loops only on my stitches, making sure that they are lined up and I'm not skipping any of them. And then I'm just gonna slip stitch. So back loops only, just like I showed you previously. And you just slip stitch all the way across. So I'm gonna do this all the way over here. When I reach this space, when I reach the place where I have my chain space, I'm going to go through the chains 
I'm not going to go through this part over here. I like just going through these chains and slip stitching them close like that. If you're using this technique, my only tip is to not make your slip stitches too tight. And I do want to call your attention to the fact that this does bunch up a little. However, I really love this technique because I love the borders that it gives me. Once you've got your two pieces, we are going to start making the flap. Is attach your yarn into the corner. So I like just going through that chain space over there and get the yarn that you're using. You're going to make a little loop with it and i'm just going to be working over this end so i'm not going to be making a knot now i'm going to chain two and in that same place where i just attached my yarn or inserted my yarn i'm going to insert a double crochet now i'm going to go ahead and double crochet into every stitch that's in the granny square while working over that end so to double crochet, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that stitch. That's the stitch. So you yarn over, insert your hook through that stitch that's on top of your granny square. Pull up a loop, then yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. Now go ahead and do this all the way to the end of the row. So you're going to insert a double crochet into all of these stitches all the way, and even here as well, because we want a nice straight edge. And this is what it's going to look like. At the end, I'm also going to work into that chain two space. And whenever you want to start a new row, every time you want to start a new row, you're going to chain two. And then you're going to turn your work. And you're going to insert a double crochet into that very first stitch over there. Right there. And that is how you're going to start every row. Then you can just go ahead and insert one double crochet into each of the stitches. But remember, when you reach the end of your row, do not insert a stitch into your chain twos. Don't insert a stitch here. Those are just your chains and they're only there to help you start a new row. This is where your first stitch is, so this is where you're going to insert your stitches. Never insert any stitch into those chain two spaces. They're just turning chains that help us start a new row, but you don't actually insert a double crochet into them. Now I'm going to show you how to make this strap. I used a mix of single crochets and the waistcoat stitch, and what this did is, because the waistcoat stitch is very dense, my strap is less stretchy than it would have been with a single half double or a double crochet. Start off by making a slip knot, and then you're going to chain whatever width you want your strap to be. So I did six chains because I want my strap to be five stitches long. So three, four, five, and six. Now this first stitch is your turning chain, so it doesn't really count as a stitch. You're going to insert your hook into that second chain from your hook, and you're going to insert a single crochet. Now you're going to insert a single crochet into all of the other chains until you get to the end of the row sure you keep count of how many stitches you have in each row. I started off with six chains and I've got five stitches in my row. One, two, three, four, and five. Every time you want to start a new row, you're going to chain one and turn on your work. Skip the chain and you're going to insert a single crochet into that first stitch over there, not into the chain, and you're going to do another single crochet. Now we're going to start doing the waistcoat stitch, but in the first and the last stitch of each row, you're going to insert a single crochet. So to do the waistcoat stitch, you're going to insert your hook in between these two legs over here. So you've got this bar and then you've got one leg and you've got another leg. So you've already worked here, you're going to work here. So you're going to insert your hook through those two legs, pushing it with your fingers until it comes back out. And then you're going to do just a regular single crochet. Make sure this part is a little bit loose so you can pull your hook up and slide it through. And that is how you do a waistcoat stitch. Again, you're going to go into the next stitch right in between those two legs. Use your fingers to push your hook through because it might be a bit tight. Pull it up and single crochet like normal. And you're going to start to see this V-knit-like look. Again. And now I've come to my last stitch of the row, so I'm just going to do a regular single crochet here. And I'm just going to go through the stitch. I went through the stitch, I didn't go through any of those leg things, and that is the end of your row. Now you're just going to repeat this until your strap is as long as you want it to be. 
So again, to start a new row, you're going to chain one, turn your work, skip the chain and insert your first single crochet into that first stitch. And now you're going to do waistcoat stitches. So in between these two legs here, you're gonna push your hook through and single crochet. So again, in between those two legs, it will be a bit tight. Now, because this stitch is so dense, it's going to take you a much longer time to make a longer strap. So if you don't want to spend this much time doing your strap, then I recommend using another stitch. Or if you don't mind a stretchy strap, you can go ahead and use double crochets or half double crochets. I finished these, now I'm in my last stitch. So the way that you're going to know, once you're done making the strap as long as you want it to be, we're going to join it together to make one piece. So fold your strap in half and line up the ends like that so my strap is folded in half. Insert your hook through the place where you were working and now we're going to slip stitch it together. So to do this you're going to insert your hook through the stitch on the other strap and just pull it through making a slip stitch then you can turn your work this way. Now you're going to insert your hook through both the pieces so through the first piece and then through the second piece and then you're going to slip stitch. And this is how you're going to join your strap together. You're going to do this before you attach your strap to your bag, just to make it easier for you to work around it. And once you're done, you can just fasten off and cut your work. And you can put this side where you slip stitch. This is what the outside's going to look like. Just make sure you go through the sides as well. You can put this at the bottom and this could be inside the bag. This is what my finished flap looks like. At the end, I just skipped one double crochet and I double crocheted into the next stitch. That's how I got this rounded edge and I did the same thing here. So you just skip one stitch and double crochet into the other one and then I fastened off by chaining two and then I cut my yarn and pulled. When you're making the strap, your strap has to be long enough to go around your bag like this. So it has to go all the way around because that's what we're going to make the sides out of. And then it has to be long enough to basically continue to make the strap as well and then we're going to join it here once you have the length that you want it to be. Now there's so many different ways that you can design the front of your bag. I've got so many pencil case tutorials where I've got a bunch of different charms that you can make. Stars, hearts, bows. I'm going to link those in the description box so you can follow those tutorials and make a cute little charm for your bag and sew it on over here. Now if you attach the piece to the bag you're going to be working on the back side so just like how we attach the granny squares you're going to put the strap and the bag facing each other. So this might be a bit tricky to do because there's lots of different things to work around, but you're basically going to be slip stitching all the way around here. So you can attach your yarn wherever. I would recommend right at the top over there so you can work all around this. And then once you're done attaching the strap to this granny square piece, then you can take your next piece and then you can attach it the same way, just slip stitch all across. I'm gonna make the wrong sides facing outwards. So the wrong side of my granny square is out and the right side of my strap, this is the right side of my strap and the right side of my granny squares are facing each other. Then you're going to insert your hook through the granny square and then through the edges of the strap. There's no specific place where you have to insert your hook. Anywhere will work as long as it's close to the edge. And then you're going to attach your yarn, pull it through, and then you're going to chain one. And then you can even tie a knot if you don't think that's secure enough. Then you're going to insert your hook through the granny square and through the strap. And you're just going to slip stitch all across to join your granny square to the bag. So you're gonna do this all the way around just inserting your hook through the granny square and the edges of the strap. You're gonna keep doing this until you reach the end. So I'm gonna slip stitch this all the way here. I'm gonna keep slip stitching. I'm gonna attach it here. Go all the way, slip stitch, slip stitch, slip stitch until I reach the end over here. And then I'm gonna chain two and fasten off and I'm gonna repeat the same thing for the back side. So for the back side, again, my wrong side will be outwards and my right side will be inwards. I'm just going to line it up, attach my yarn and slip stitch all the way back. This is what the right side will look like once you've attached everything. It's going to have sort of like a, an invisible seam but you can kind of see that 
So this is what the bag will basically look like on the outside. Again, there are lots of different ways to join your work. So you can also sew it, you can use anything else that you want, but just slip stitch all the way around. Now, I haven't finished my granny square bag yet because I am on deadline, but you can see the finished product on my Instagram and TikTok. Remember to slip stitch. You don't have to attach anything to this. Just, slop, just stop your slip stitches here and fasten off. Stop your slip stitches here and fasten off. And that's it. You can also use stitch buttons. I've used them for some of my bags. You can sew them on one here, one here to open and close your bag. And yeah, that's how you do a very basic, very easy granny square bag.